All right, welcome to the next lecture, and uh, we're going to continue moving through the material. So we're finally to the uh, discrete, uh, discrete components uh, section here of the notes, and we're going to talk about uh, resistors, capacitors, inductors, transformers, diodes, uh, transistors, and maybe a couple other things. Uh, however, we've already seen some of these things, and we've already talked about them a little bit, and what I wanted to do before we kind of uh, dug into more theory is I promised to do some uh, hands-on stuff. So we're going to uh, hook some circuits up and we're going to draw some, uh, uh, some circuits and do a little bit of circuit analysis and kind of go over Ohm's law uh, again and, and uh, with some examples and then kind of build things and kind of go back and forth. So let's, uh, let's get into that right now. <clears throat> All right. So uh, first thing is here, Let's uh, refresh our memory on uh, Ohm's law. And uh, if we recall, uh, Ohm's law, and I don't know, maybe we should pick a different color. What do you guys think? This color? Brighter color? OK. So we've got Ohm's law. And <clears throat> it states that voltage equals current times resistance which also means that current equals voltage divided by resistance. And it also means that resistance equals voltage divided by current. And then we also learned uh, how to compute power, which is not part of Ohm's law, but we're going to put it here anyway. Power equals voltage times uh, current. And then here's something interesting. Uh, because uh, of Ohm's law, we have, say, voltage and we have current here, we can write power in terms of uh, voltage and resistance and remove current. So voltage equals current times resistance. So that's one thing. Current equals voltage divided by resistance. So <clears throat> if we replace the voltage here with, uh, excuse me, if we replace current here with V over R, then we're going to get V times V over R which, of course, equals V squared over R. Now, this is really important. So <clears throat> power equals V squared over R. <clears throat> and this is important because it shows us <clears throat> that the power dissipation in a, in a resistive circuit is proportional not to the voltage, but to the voltage squared. And that's why voltage is so important uh, in systems and computing systems to lower the voltage down. So we've went from, you know, in the 70s from 12 volt systems. Now we're down to 5 volt systems in the 80s and 90s. Now we're down to 3 volt, 3.3 volt systems. We're down to 1.8 volt systems, 1.5 volt systems, and down to 1.2 volt systems even. And we keep trying to decrease that V so that this, this term right here decreases because it uh, goes up as a square of the voltage. So keep that in mind. All right, so we have all of our equations over here, our modeling equations. So now let's go ahead and let's, uh, let's do some circuits uh, again uh, to uh, kind of reinforce uh, Ohm's law. All right, so we're getting pretty good. So I'm going to kind of go fairly fast. And let's get our calculators out and kind of follow. So let's do something. Let's say that uh, we have a... Uh, Let's say that we have a 9-volt battery. And in fact, let's not draw these as batteries. Let's draw these as just voltage sources. OK, let's just keep things simple. So there's a voltage source. All right. And we've got a resistor. All right. And let's say that this is a 9-volt battery, like we said. But we're drawing it as a voltage source. It's 9 volts. And then we've got this resistor. We'll call this R1. All right. And let's say that this equals let's say 10k, 10k ohms, all right? So when we cr create the circuit right here, we've got a closed loop. We're going to get a current. We're going to get a conventional current that's going to go in this direction, always from plus to minus. That's the way that holes are going to flow or conventional current. And now we want to compute what the uh, current is, and let's call this I, all right? And so the first thing that uh, is going to happen is as we have a, a current which is flowing through the circuit, we're going to get a voltage drop. So in the direction of the current, so this is really important. So here's the direction of the current right here, right? The voltage over this resistor is going to drop plus to minus. All right, so there's going to be a voltage drop over the resistor, and there's going to be a current that's generated in this circuit. So the first thing is, what's the voltage drop? So if we come down and we draw ground right here, 
All right, so that's ground, and this is uh, zero volts, let's say. So this node, remember, every conductor, all the voltages uh, are the same in the conductor no matter where you are. All right, so we're at zero volts here, zero volts here, zero volts here, zero volts here. So we're at zero here, and if we increase by nine volts, we'd be nine volts up here, right? So nine volts up at this node, and we would be nine volts <clears throat> at this node as well. And the entire voltage will have to drop over this one resistive element so to get us back down to zero volts. So we know that there's nine volts that drop over that resistor, which makes sense because there's just one voltage source and one resistor. Okay, so let's do our math. So we know that V equals I times R. We want to compute I, so we know that I equals <clears throat> V over R, all right? And the voltage is nine volts over R, which is 10 K ohms. All right, so when we uh, do this calculation, so everyone get your calculator out. So we're going to do 9 divided by 10 x3, 10 to the third. And we get, uh, depending on uh, your calculator and uh, what, uh, what your uh, calculator, what format it puts the uh, number in. So we're getting, let's do it in milliamps, so we're getting 0 0.9 milliamps. All right, so we're getting 0.9 milliamps. Now, if we wanted to, we could turn that into, say, microamps, right? We could put that into microamps. If we did turn it into microamps, what would that look like? So we have 0 0.9 milliamps. If we want to turn this into microamps, we're going to have to move the decimal three times to the right. One, two, three. Okay, so we would have 900 microamps. So there's 900 microamps flowing in that circuit with the 10K resistor, all right? And so there's one example right there. All right, so uh, as we uh, increase this resistance, the current is going to decrease, decrease, decrease. All right, so let's do another example. So let's see if we can delete all this up. And uh, unfortunately, this tool, it does have a, a uh, rectangular copy and delete, but it doesn't work exactly the way. Well, we're going to have to give it a try. Let's see if we can get this to do what we need this to do. And where did that tool go? It is right here. Let's see. Now we deleted the whole thing. Let's put that back. And this is a problem using these tools. Let's try lasso, lasso tool. And let's see here. I think the background is the right color. OK, good. OK, let's go back to our pen that we had, all right, okay, good. Okay, so uh, now let's do another circuit. So let's do another circuit. So let's say that we have, let's do batteries this time. All right, so we're gonna have uh, one battery here and let's put another battery here. So we've got series batteries and let's say that uh, this is a 1.5 volt cell. Maybe it's a AA battery, right? So we could say that's a AA battery just for fun. And we could say that this is also a 1.5 volt cell. And we could say that this is, say, a AAA battery. So here's plus, here's minus, here's plus, here's minus. So we'll figure out what's going on there in a second. And now, <clears throat> and again, these are the symbols for resistors. We've seen this before. But we're going to really formalize this in the uh, lecture in a little bit. OK, so we have two resistors. So now uh, R1 and R2. And uh, again, you know, this, uh, this course, we're not going to do an enormous amount of circuit analysis. We're going to do a little bit of circuit analysis. We want to learn all these things and how to, how to do them. And one of the most important things when you're trying to learn circuit analysis is you have to be extremely detail-oriented. And it's, it's a lot of bookkeeping, really. And if you don't do your bookkeeping and draw things properly, you're just going to get confused. So we've got resistor 1, resistor 2. We've got uh, these voltages here. So let's call this V1 and V2. All right, and again, let's put a ground here. Okay, so uh, we've got two resistors, and let's set these. So let's see here. Let's uh, let's see that we're going to put three volts here. So let's go ahead and put a couple of common resistors. So we'll say that this is uh, 100 ohms here, and let's say that this is uh, 330 ohms here. Okay. All right, and uh, you know uh, my omega symbols aren't as good as they could be. Maybe you can draw them way better, but as long as you know what you're what you're talking about, you're good. Okay. So the first thing is. Uh, let's deal with the batteries over here. So what's going to go on with these two, two batteries? 
So we've talked about this before. And since we're putting these in series, and minus the plus, minus the plus, the voltage will add up. So the total voltage will be 3 volts. So from here, this point here, to this point here will be a 3 volt uh, difference, or 3 volt potential. So now we could simplify those batteries into one, one virtual battery or one abstract battery. That's 3 volts, but we're just going to say 3 volts in, instead of redrawing it. So now we've got 3 volts. We know we're going to generate a current here. So let's go ahead and let's draw the current. So let's start getting color, a little more colorful here. We might as well. All right, so we're going to get a current. The current's going to flow in the circuit. It's going to flow through both resistors. All right, in this direction, conventional current, right? Now, so here's some important questions, and, and now we're going to start getting into the nitty-gritty, and we're going to start you know, picking up the pace a little bit. And uh, so this current here, and let's call this current, we'll call this current just I. Question, the current I that goes through R1, is it the same current that goes through R2? So I want you to think about that for a second. Think about that for one second while I do some drawing. All right, so, so what do you think? So is it the same current, or is it a different current because we have different resistors? Now, whatever you said, let's think about this at an atomic level. So what is current? Current is the actual motion of electrons, or in conventional current, it's the motion of holes. The bottom line is we've got little charges that are moving around the circuit, all right? That's the current. Okay, so these little guys are moving around here, and they're going uh, through the wire, through the resistors, and back through the power sources, and round and round they go. So, one charge moves in at this end, has to go through here, that same charge has to go out through here, goes down the wire, now it enters in here, same charge has to exit out here, and, and go on its merry way. So now, considering that, what's your answer, do you think? It's the same. The current is the same. So the current I that goes through R1 is the exact same current that goes through R2. And you can just look at that little analogy to kind of figure that out. All right. Okay. So now let's erase some of that. And okay. And uh, so now let's look at uh, something else that's going on. So now since we have two resistors, we're going to have two different voltage drops. So here's where things get a little bit tricky. So if I were to ask you, what's the voltage at this node right here? So it's three volts here, and this is a wire. It's a conductor, so the voltage has to stay the same here. So it's going to be three volts here. So that we agree with, three volts. Down here, uh, we're calling this ground. So this right here is going to be zero volts. And it's going to be zero volts right here. It's going to be zero volts right here, because this is a wire, right? All right, so now here's where it gets tricky. So 3 volts up here, 0 volts here. What is the voltage right here? All right. So that's a good question. Now, there's a lot of ways that we can approach this. And again, we have Ohm's law. Uh, so we have this. So that's one thing to compute this with. Now, uh, we also uh, uh, talked about uh, a little bit about you know how... Uh, Batteries add up in series and pa parallel, right? Well, resistors kind of do the same thing. And we're going to go over this more. But right now, I'll tell you, and let's think about this. If we have two resistors, which are just pieces of carbon, all right, and we put them in series, what's going to happen is the resistance is going to increase, and it's going to increase as the sum of the individual resistances. Therefore, if we take these resistors and we just add them up, so we can say this, we can say, and let's go back to our yellow, we can say R total, or in fact, let's call it R12 equals R1 plus R2. All right, so if we were from this node here, this upper node here, uh, to this bottom node here, if we were to replace that with one resistor and call it R12, it would just be the sum of the two resistors. So that would be 100 plus 330, correct? 100 ohms plus 330 ohm. All right, so that would equal 430 ohm, okay? So we would just have one giant resistor. So just for a minute here, let's just draw this uh, resistor just kind of as a dotted line here. So this is kind of replacing. So this resistor, which we're calling R12, 
which we're calling R12, replaces these two resistors. And now we can just do the circuit uh, as if these two resistors don't exist. So we have one resistor, we've got one three volt power source, and guess what, we're right back to the other example. So we've got V equals I times R, we wanna compute I, so I equals V over R. So I equals V over R. What is our V in the circuit? It's three volts going over this big resistor, right? Three volts. And what's R? Well, R is the value of R12, right? Which equals 430 ohms. Therefore, when you do that calculation, again, get out, get out your calculator. 3 divided by 430 equals 6.97 milliamps. 6.97 milliamps. 6.97 milliamps. All right? So this I right here, I equals 6.97 milliamps. Now, let's forget about this virtual resistor or the series sum resistor to help us do the calculation. And now let's pretend there are two resistors uh, back in the circuit again. Now we know that the current in the circuit, I, is 6.97 milliamps. It's the same current in R1, it's the same current in R2. So now we can compute what the voltage drop over R1 and the voltage drop over R2 is. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's do that in another color over here. So we want to figure out voltage drop over R1, and we're going to figure out the voltage drop over R2. All right, so the voltage drop over R1 is going to be right here. So this is going to be V R1, and the voltage drop over R2 is going to be V R2. So VR1, so let's look, what's our equation for voltage? It equals current times resistance. So what's the current? It's 6.97 milliamps. 6.97 milliamps, all right? And what's our uh, resistance? 100 ohms times 100 ohms. So we'll uh, compute that in a second. Then VR2 is the same current, right, which is 6.97 milliamps. And let me fix that. That looks like microamps. Sorry about that. Milliamps times our resistance, which is 330 ohms. All right, again, let's get out our calculator. We could do this in our heads, but let's not. 6.97 milliamps, 6.97 X minus 3 times 100 ohms equals 0 0.697, 0 0.697, so 0 0.697 volts. All right, let's do the next one. Um, uh, voltage over R2 is going to be 6.97 milliamps, 6.97 milliamps times 330. So it should be about three times as much, right? So it's 2.3 volts. Now, all right, and you know we're uh, we're losing a little bit of accuracy here because I'm I'm uh, clipping uh, uh, some of these decimal places. The voltage drop of these two resistors has to equal three volts, right? So this this number here plus this number here have to equal uh, three volts. And when I'm clipping these off, and I'm just I'm not going as many decimal places as I should, or rounding, we're going to get a little bit of error. But but that's okay. The reason it's okay is these resistors in the first place are only five or ten percent accurate in the first place, so it doesn't even matter. All right. Okay. So now here's the interesting part. So over VR1 we dropped 0.697 volts. So VR1 has a voltage drop of 0 0.697, all right? And you know what, just, just to, to make things uh, happy, let's call this 0.7. 0.697, let's just round it up to 0.7 volts, okay? All right, and then VR2 is a voltage drop of 2.3 volts, 2.3 volts. All right, so the first thing is they do add up to three volts, so that's good. Now, what's the voltage V? I still wanna ask this question. So we're at three volts right here, we drop 0.7, so we, we must be at 2.3 volts here. And that makes sense because the voltage drop over uh, R2, or VR2 we're calling it, is 2.3. So whatever we're here, we drop down 2.3, which we computed. Or we could say at ground, we're here at ground, zero, and if we dropped 2.3 volts over R2, that means if we go back up, right, in the other direction, this would also be 2.3 volts. Whatever the drop was, if we go up, uh, uh, in the opposite direction, it would be 2.3. So there we go. So there's a complete circuit analyzed. All right. And uh, 
so we've got a we, we did a, a series resistance we had a series a couple of batteries we computed the current we computed the voltage drops at all the different nodes and this is basically what we're going to use ohm's law and there's some other laws that we're going to learn uh down the line a little bit uh called uh, Kir kirchhoff's laws and uh we'll uh, go through those which will help with circuit analysis and remember you know we just want to know how to do this so that if we have to compute something we can get it done okay all right so now Let's go ahead, and I've been promising to uh, do some uh, actual uh, hands-on electronics here. And, and finally, we have enough information to do so, all right? So we're going to go to the bench, and we're going to uh, build some circuits, some little ones that kind of use some of these ideas. And, and what we're going to do is we're going uh, to turn LEDs on, and we're going to uh, power them up and, and do some stuff with that, all right? So we're going to go over to the bench. So first thing, thing is, let's just delete all that. So that's gone. And then uh, meet me over here at the uh, bench, and let's start playing with this stuff. Okay, so what are we going to do? we are going to build some stuff here all right so the first thing is uh we've got uh this uh little uh solderless breadboard and let's do a quick uh discussion about this again and, and again my process when i uh, when i teach is i like to show you things over and over in different ways so that you can kind of get the hang of it and see how it's used uh, so you don't, don't just see it and then we jump right into it so here's a so uh, solderless breadboard and uh here's another one here's another one right here's another one okay and all of these uh, are just simply different sizes different manufacturers and for example the uh, these uh, these guys that have the uh, you can see they have the uh, the two rails up here this uh, blue and red and this one's a uh, black and red actually uh, in this case if we uh, look here these uh, these rails are all connected together. So that's connected, and then the one under it is connected, but they aren't connected to each other. And typically, typically you'll use these for power. And then uh, all of these are connected vertically in columns, but not across this uh, trench. And that's because we're going to put chips in there and whatnot, and this is made of very special size so that the distance between holes is 0.1 inch because that's a very common uh, pitch for components, all right? And you can see they have these little... Uh, uh, little uh, uh, bosses sticking out and this is because they can be connected together and, and you can make bigger ones out of them and this is just simply a different manufacturer and then another thing you'll notice there's numbers on here and that way you can kind of keep track of what pins are and so forth and then in this case you see all these are connected here and then all these are connected here but they aren't connected to each other so you can see I've ran two wires connecting these two rails so they go all the way across like that and then uh, here's a little guy and this is uh, this is real uh, cool and uh, real small. It has no power rails, but this might be something if you want to just hook something small up. And then uh, everything comes. There's you can get any color you want. They can get transparent or whatever. Now you might notice this uh, paper on the back of these. Typically, this is a, a double-sided tape kind of thing, and it's already stuck to the board. If you pull this off, it'll be adhesive, and then you can stick it down to something. All right. Okay, so, and then uh, this last one here, I just wanted to show you this. So this is a very old one, and this is uh, Archer, and this is from Radio Shack. And I mean, honestly, I probably got this 20 years ago. And so this is an old Archer Radio Shack uh, solderless breadboard. I've used it hundreds of times, and it's still, still working. And again, you see it's got this, it's got this, and so forth, so that you could... Uh, stick these things together and make bigger boards now these used to be quite expensive now the prices are gone down and, and of course there's so many chinese vendors you can get uh, things for a lot less but when i used to build things 20 years ago i'd have to get 20 of these things to build a gigantic board but now you can actually buy these so for example here's another one all right global specialties is another company uh, that you can get these things from if you if you google uh, and uh, this one's got two built on it plus it's got this nice metal uh, board on it right and uh, if you look under here it's nice and metal very very strong now the other thing that you gain and we're going to talk about this a little once we get to a little bit more advanced subjects this metal uh, plane under here can act as a ground it can act as a shield also if you've heard the word Faraday shield it can act as a shield and uh, uh, fields can't get through this electric fields cannot get through this so that's why we like this and it also gives a place for the electronics if we ground this metal it gives a place for all the fields to terminate on so that's a really good way to build things and then you see there's a va here and vb 
And if you want, what you can do is, and uh, I'll let you take a look at these up on edge, if we can see them, if the camera, yep. And so what you'll do is you would take uh, your power supply wires, which might be coming from something else, let the uh, camera focus, and you put them in here, and there's little holes in here, all right, and let me, again, see that little hole, and I put it through the little hole, and then I would tighten this down, and maybe this goes to the power supply, and then I'd maybe put another one in here, all right, and then what I would do is I would take this wire, and I would put it into the plus. So now we would be running power into this, and then uh, we can uh, run power out of it. Or there's other connectors that we can do this with, and then we would connect ground, and uh, this might be, uh, this might be uh, our negative, this might be our positive, and this might be ground, all right, which would also be connected to the uh, negative typically. All right, now, and then there's even bigger ones here, like that, and so you can see they just get bigger and bigger and bigger, and in this case, this is, this is uh, you can see this here hopefully in the camera, so we got V sub A, V sub B, V sub C, and ground, so this might be because you have three different voltages, all right, and then this, uh, these connectors here, Again, let's take a look at these connectors. And then in your kit, or the things that uh, you could have bought, uh, you have different kinds of wire and whatnot. And so you can either, you could have either, either done things with just wire, you can cut it and strip it at each end, right? Or if you went and wanted to uh, get some of the other wires, then you should have been able to get some of this stuff here. And these have, for example, females on one end, and then females on the other end, and they have a certain length. And then we can uh, go, and there's all kinds of variations of this. And this one right here has males on each end, so they plug right into these boards, really nice. And this just makes it really easy to uh, hook things up. You can just plug them right in and, and then hook things up, right? So that's just part of construction. We're going to talk more about that uh, as we go. All right, now, another way that we might hook these things uh, up is with... Um, what are called uh, banana connectors. So, for example, so if you look at these uh, connectors right here, and you see their ends, and let me put this on the zoomed screen for you. So take a look here. All right, you see that, and they're kind of spring-loaded, and that's kind of spring-loaded as well. And what we can do is we can actually plug these in here, like this, and plug it in, and plug it in, or plug it in to the red one if we want, because we want to be color-coded, all right? And then these these ends, in this case, in this case, uh, happen to be these little guys. So we could connect those to a battery, or we could connect them to something else, all right? Okay, or another thing that we could do is we might have these kind of ends, and these are called alligator clips, all right? And we can plug those in, so there's metal in the tops of these things. So we can plug these in like this, and we could plug this one here, the ground, and there, make good contact. Now the other end of these things, right? So where would the other end go? They might go, oops, they might go to your uh, power supply, all right? So let's take a look uh, at that right now. So in this case, so here, so here is a power supply, and those two cables uh, right here are uh, actually plugged into that board that we just looked at. All right, and uh, we can turn this power supply on, and so this is an adjustable power supply, and it's got a fine adjustment and a uh, coarse adjustment, and then this little button enables power out. And this is what you're going to want if you're going to uh, be doing a lot of uh, electronics. You need uh, bench power supplies, they're called. And here's another uh, power supply. This is a three-channel power supply. It's a little bit, the LCD screen's a little bit hard to see. Let's see if we can get it to cooperate, the camera. And this has three different channels. It's totally programmable, programmable current and all that. And uh, this is uh, very, very, very good. And, and these power supplies run anywhere from $150 to uh, three or $400.00. Uh, for the uh, small power supply. So this power supply you might be able to get for 100, 150. You can get them cheaper on eBay and whatnot also if you look. And that three channel uh, could be, like I said, three, four, five hundred, depending on where you get it and what you get. All right, so you can see I have this set at five volts. And let me just play with this for a second, just to show you. 
and I can put the voltage up, I can put the voltage down, and then I can play with the fine adjustment, and it says it's five volts. Now, why does the current say it's zero? Because we have no load on it. So I'll turn this on, and when I turn this on, that means that these lines are now hot. All right, so there's five volts, ground and five volts are here, and whatever I have hooked up would start drawing current, but since we don't have anything hooked up yet, up yet, we just have it plugged in the board, nothing is happening. So I'm gonna disable the DC out, but I'm gonna leave the supply on, all right? Okay, so we're back here, and uh, so I've decided I wanna use this board, and I need to get power in here. So what I've done is I've taken our two uh, alligator clips, all right, and these are going to be hot in a moment from the main power supply that uh, we just looked at. And so what I'm going to do is somehow I've got to get that power into here. And uh, So one way to do it is uh, you can see I've got these little posts. And uh, these posts I've just taken apart. So if you take a look, so this is called a, a header, right? And it's just uh, this uh, is got 0.1 inch pitch, and it's just a bunch of contacts that can go into a printed circuit board. But you can pull these posts out and do things with them, right? And uh, so that's what I did. So I pulled a couple of those posts out, and I put one here, and I want put one here. One is on the plus, and one is on the minus on the top and the bottom, respectively. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that guy there. There's the red, and there's the black, all right? And we're going to connect that there. All right, and now when I turn that power supply on, uh, we're actually going to, uh, when I turn that power supply on, this board will be hot. All right, so we're going to do our electronics with the board uh, hot and cold. It's only 5 volts, so we can't do too much damage. All right, but we want to keep that in mind. Now, the power supply, if we were to short something, it actually has short protection, so it'll be okay. All right, so we don't need to worry about it, but we don't want to short it nevertheless. Okay, so what are we going to do? So, uh, so let's have some fun here. So the first thing is, uh, let's go back and let's draw a little circuit that we're going to try and hook up, and we're going to see what the circuit does, all right? We're going to see if it does what it's supposed to do. Okay, so let's go back to the screen here. All right, so we're going to go back to the drawing tool here. All right, and let's do a simple circuit. So we've got our uh, power source. Let's do uh, 5 volts, which we said. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a resistor in here. All right. And this resistor right here, let's say that this equals to 100 ohms. All right. And that's going to have a current that's going to go through it. Right. We're going to call that I. And uh, I is going to equal what? V over R. V equals 5 volts. R equals 100 ohms. Again, get your calculator out until you can do these in your head. And I don't want to do them in my head yet until uh, you're comfortable. All right, so that's going to be uh, 50 milliamps. All right, 50 milliamps. So if we build this circuit and we measure this current, we're going to get 50 milliamps. Now, how do you measure the current in a circuit? To measure the current, we need to use the meter. And we haven't learned much about meters, but we're going to but we have to use it in amp mode and we have to put it in series. So what we got to do is we actually have to break this circuit open and let's see if we can be so bold to find the eraser here. All right. And we got to break the circuit open and let's get back to our pen. And then what we got to do is we have to put the meter uh, inside of the circuit. So we go like this, go like this. Here is our amp meter like this all right and there's a little amp meter and uh, plus to minus and then this will measure the current for us all right and we should measure this 50 uh, milliamp years okay so let's build this circuit and let's see what happens all right okay so the first thing uh, when we build circuits is we want to kind of get all our parts here so we kind of have them so here's a few little parts. I've got some uh, LEDs. I got some switches. I got a couple of uh, resistors here. All right, and we need our 100 ohm resistor for one thing. So, uh, so I looked here, and I've got, I believe, I've got a 1k resistor, and I've got a 100k resistor. So I need a 100 ohm. All right, and we're going to learn uh, color code, uh, but uh, 100 ohm is brown, black, brown. All right, brown, black, brown. So I'm going to look for that. And while I'm looking at that, I want you to look at this, all right? And this is a resistor color code, and we're going to go over this. So take a look at that while I'm while I'm doing this <clears throat> and looking for a 100 ohm resistor. So we're looking for brown, black, brown, 
brown, black, brown. Okay, so I found my brown, black, brown. And so if you look at it, the uh, first, the first, uh, the first band is brown, which represents a one. All right, so now let's go under. So here's uh, here's the resistor. All right, brown, black, brown. Let's go to the zoom screen. All right, and all right. So we've got brown there, and that's a one. And then the black is zero, so that's one zero. And then we have this multiplier, which is a multiplier. It's brown, which is multiplier ten. So we got ten times ten. That's one hundred ohms. And the final band is gold, which uh, means uh, five percent accuracy, I believe. Yeah, plus or minus five percent tolerance, and then silver is uh, is ten percent. Okay, all right. So we have our resistor. So we now we have all our parts here that we want to uh, deal with. All right. Okay. So now we need stuff to build this with, and what I'm going to do is uh, I want to use just plain wires. And so these are all pre-cut. And what I usually do is I make some long ones, I make some medium ones, and I make short ones. I don't cut every single wire to a perfect length. I usually cut them in a binary. So I might make one 8 inches, 4 inches, 2 inches, and 1 inch, right? Each one is half the previous or, or twice the previous if you're doing bigger, all right? And that way you can kind of hook everything up and uh, make things neat and nice. Or you could use your pre-made wires, right, these kind of things if you uh, decided to have these uh, and you you know bought these in your kit and I highly recommend these because they're very very easy you don't have to cut anything all right okay so let's go ahead here and we're gonna build our circuit all right so let's uh, let's do this now let's come down on this a little bit we're gonna zoom in just a little bit here all right okay now the circuits that we draw the circuits that we draw on the computer right are abstractions and the real circuit uh, doesn't need to look the same way geometrically. It just needs to uh, be connected the same way, right? So we have power going through a resistor, going to ground. So that is as simple as it gets, through a 100 ohm resistor and then going to ground. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put our resistor inside here. Okay, so we've got our resistor in there. Now, one thing you notice, see how high that is? Typically, we don't like that, right? It's just, right, it's just, it's just horrible. It's flying in the air. So I'm going to take that resistor, and I'm going to take my cutters, which I have right here, and I'm just going to kind of cut half of that wire off, right? I'm just going to cut half of that wire off on both of those leads, all right? Now, and this is why you want to have uh, protective uh, goggles on so that this doesn't go flying in your, your uh, eyes, all right? But another thing you can do is kind of hold it as you cut it. So I just cut it, and then I have a little piece there. I'm going to throw that away. There's a garbage over here to my right. And I'm going to cut the other one. All right, just cut it like that. Okay. All right. And then, you know, I like making really neat circuits. So I'm going to just take my pliers here and straighten that out real quick. Okay. So now I'm going to plug this in, this resistor back in here. All right. So cool, we got that. And maybe we can zoom in just a little bit more even. I think we can get away with, yeah. All right. Now we need to connect this thing to power. So we just need to connect it up to plus and minus. All right. So we're just going to find a couple wires. And so, you know, these wires might be all bent up. Now, some, some people just plug this in. No, 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 don't do that. Pull the thing out, straighten it out, clean it up, and try and get, you know, we only need a wire that'll go from here to here. That's it. Very, very short, right? So we don't need this long wire. We could use this long wire. So again, uh, you know, what I'll do is when I'm building things, I'll pour everything out on a table and kind of spread them out so I can kind of see what's going on. So you're not going to be able to see this, but I'm going to be able to see this so that I can kind of work and uh, and do this in a clean in a clean fashion. So now I found some uh, little short ones. I've got many, many short ones. I'm going to take that. I'm going to just bend that over. And be careful, everybody, when you're bending things and poking things. These wires, uh, you'll impale yourself a lot. I have put holes through the tips of my fingers many, many times. Not going to kill you, but it doesn't feel good. All right. So we're going to put that in there. Nice. Okay, we're going to get another short wire. I got another one right here. I'm going to clean this up, straighten it out. Okay, bend it, get it all ready. Then I'm going to go ahead and put it in here to the ground. All right, so we've got the black going to ground. We've got the red going to red. And now we have our circuit right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's power this up. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the power supply. All right. And I look at the power supply, and it's actually saying 50 milliamps. So let's go back uh, over here 
to the computer and uh, let's go back to our calculation here on the screen and you can see we have uh, our uh, circuit and we computed 50 milliamps all right so we have that 50 milliamps and that's exactly what we're getting so okay that's good now let me actually show you on the power supply so go ahead now and take a look here at the power supply and you can see it's 0.05 amps which is 50 milliamps right so that's accurate as accurate as it can be all right so that's good okay all right now the problem is well how do we measure this so we're looking at the power supply we're using that to kind of tell us what's going on but how do we actually measure this all right so what we need to do is we need to get a meter so we're going to get one of our multimeters and we're going to create some room and one of the things you're going to learn real quick when you do electronics is you do not have enough space there is not enough space in the universe to build stuff you need uh, just countless uh, surface areas all right so i'm moving things out of the way here okay all right i think i'm good all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get a meter here and i'm going to put the meter uh, next to this and i'm going to unfortunately have to zoom out so we can see what's going on here so we're going to zoom out zoom out zoom out okay so we're going to zoom out and we've got our meter here all right and uh, so the first thing i'm going to do again we're going to learn more about this but we can just figure it out now so we're going to put the meter on milliamp mode and you see it's blinking at me and that means hey put the cable in this uh in this connector in this socket so i'm going to put the uh, test probe in that socket and now i've got my two uh, test probes and so this is ready it's going to read uh, milliamps it's on milliamp scale right now dc so we're all good there now what do i do with this what do we do with this we have to somehow put this inside of this circuit right and uh, this is not uh, very easy so i have to undo one of these power supply lines and then kind of insert this into here all right and let the current flow through the meter all right so there's a couple ways to do that uh, one we could just kind of undo this and let it flow through the meter all right so let's give that a try so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn off the power supply so i just turned it off all right and now i'm going to undo the ground line all right now i'm going to turn the meter back on all right and now uh, what i'm going to do is this so we have positive uh, conventional current flowing through down here and now it can't get anywhere it's got to flow through the meter so now I'm going to actually touch the probe here and then I'm going to touch it to ground and as I do that uh, the meter will complete the circuit and then the current will flow through the meter and we'll be able to view it all right so let's give that a try here we go and there it is 49.2 milliamps so 49.3 now so amazingly that works so we can uh, so we, we made our first circuit and uh, we measured the current and uh, and it did what it's supposed to do so now I'm going to put the uh, wire back in and I'm leaving the power supply on uh, and it's okay because there's not much to short here so I'm, I'm pretty confident I'm not going to damage anything now on the meter I'm going to put this probe back into voltage the voltage port I'm going to put the meter into a uh, voltage mode here and I'm going to measure what the voltage is 